Legend has it that long ago, a group of seven heroes rose up and saved the world from hordes of merciless fiends. Their names were thus. Kazinsi, Subie, Dantarg, Noel, Bakon, Rock Bouquet, Wagnus. It was said they would return, should the world fall under threat once more. Time that conflict and turmoil descended upon the land, people were reminded of that legend. However, as discord gave way to peace, the legend would slip from people's minds into oblivion. History was doomed to repeat. After years of stability, the veil of peace lifted, revealing another age of division and strife. It's only a matter of time before fiends attack this town. We need the legendary seven heroes to save us, now more than ever. Before you. Uh. Ah! What? Ah! Once again, the names of the seven heroes rang throughout the land. Those Harbingers of Justice had returned. And yet... Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam Wolf and this is Romancing Saga 2 Revenge of the Seven. 
Uh, that was a hell of an intro. And I completely forgot that this was in full 3D. I don't know why I expected pixel art, but I was like, ooh, that fire at the beginning looks really good. Because I'm actually really enjoying the fact that a lot of companies are bringing back pixel art or, or, or sprite-based games and, you know, really amping up the lighting quality and the colors and everything. But I'm pleasantly surprised to say that it's in 3D and on Unreal Engine nonetheless. I'm guessing Unreal Engine 4 because this was probably in development prior to Unreal Engine 5 being fully in, um, available. But um, it looked good. Frame rate looked like it was trying to hit 60. It did drop quite a bit there, but you know that's an intro cinematic, so maybe the gameplay will be a little bit better. Who knows? But a um, little background into uh, my experience with the Romancing Saga series. I had the original Romancing Saga remake, believe it or not, there were remakes, back in the day on the PlayStation 2. Um, I was unaware that it was the original one remade, but um, or it essentially remastered, if you will, I guess, for the PlayStation 2, because I think it was originally on the PlayStation 1 or the Super Nintendo, I can't remember. But it's another Square Enix JRPG. They've got many of them, and uh, when I saw this one coming out, I was really excited. I'm like, ooh, Romancing Saga, can't, making a comeback here, so um, I'm very excited to get into this one, because I never played the second one. I don't think I've played anything past the first one, so um, I'm really excited, so let's get into it. Will you please tell me one of your stories? I shall tell you a tale of a war fought many, many years ago. A tale of Avalon and the Varenne Empire and the succession of emperors that led it into prosperity. Spirits, lend me your voices, that this tale might inspire all to greater heights. The stage is set during the time of good Emperor Leon. In those days of Eld, Avalon was a nation of little note. Conflict had spread throughout the land, like fire through dense brush. Leon knew that quenching its flames was key to unifying the people under one banner. Under his roof, he cared for two sons, the courageous Victor and the kind-hearted Gerard. One fine spring day, Emperor Leon took Gerard out on a foray to call the fiends lurking in a cave. This cave has caused our people to suffer for far too long. We must eradicate the foul creatures within and seal it off. Understood, Father. We are to reconvene with the Vanguard unit. On the way, I shall teach you the basics of combat. However, this is no training exercise. You must be prepared both mentally and physically. I shall do my best to see that I am. Okay. We're getting right into it. Uh... First thing, can I just say, I love the color, man. It really just pops. Everything just looks so good. Uh, use L to move around the map. L or R2 will toggle sprint. Oh, click it in. Okay, that's fine. Use to move the camera. Default sprint behavior. Blah, blah, blah. Wow, he's already running pretty fast as it is. Uh, motion blur is kind of nice. Uh, it's running at a solid 60. And just like most of the uh, JRPGs coming out lately... Uh, they don't really give you an option. It just is. <laughs> it's just at 60 FPS, which I have mentioned that I do actually kind of like. I like the fact that they're kind of just saying, okay, this is what we're offering. Uh, and that's how it's going to be, which, you know, if you can get it to run at a stable frame rate, which, you know, you look at this game and yes, it looks good, but it's a, it's the art that makes it look good, not the graphic... Uh, prowess, if you will. Reddish ore. So it's not red, it's reddish. Alright, we're getting into combat. Here we go. Ooh, I like the music. Encounters will be conducted in a turn-based format along an overarching timeline. 
The turn order and upcoming actions will be displayed on the top left of the screen. Try using a variety of texts and spells to take down the enemy. Uh, I'm loving the fact that a lot of JRPGs are sticking with the turn-based combat system. It is such a throwback, man. I, I love it. Let's go. We have uh, BP, which I'm guessing is battle points, maybe? We also have spells, which is nice. Light ball. Why not? Yeah, it's weak against that. Ooh. All right. Bomb, I'm guessing, gives... You got quality, gives you health back and whatnot. Those little shield bubbles. All right, so they're weak against this. At least we know that much. What is this double cut? Oh, pff, easy. Son, you're weak. Basically, one-shotting him. Characters will earn technique points when emerging victorious from battles. Once certain thresholds of TP are reached, the character's weapon slash spell school level will increase. Units will only gain TP for weapons and spells they use during the encounter, including restorative spells. Be sure to use a wide variety to ensure they grow stronger. Max HP and BP values will always earn TP as long as the unit is present in the encounter and will similar, similarly increase in level once TP requirements are met. Alright, so you want to use as many abilities and spells as you can to level them up. Interesting. Harkens back to Final Fantasy II where your, you didn't, your character, I mean even though these characters do have levels, in Final Fantasy II, the characters did not have levels but your weapons did. So you could swap weapons and be back down to zero if one weapon is of a lesser level than the one you've been working with. So it's very interesting. They kind of mix the two together here. Get ready, Gerard. Oh, zombies! Enemies have varying weaknesses. Attacking them with a weapon or spell type that an enemy is weak to will deal more damage and fill the overdrive gauge on the bottom right. Try using different weapon types and spells to find out what is most effective on your foes. The spell tab can be accessed by using L or R1 to toggle the battle menu. We already figured this out. Um, I'm guessing light balls probably, they're probably weak against it as well. Boosh. Yep. Seems like most everything in the dark is weak against light. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have much. Ah, attacking the old man, huh? Okay, I'd like to fill that overdrive. They're not attacking his son at all. <laughs> Oosh. Yeah, it, I think we're going to kill him before we can even fill it. Look at this. They're not attacking him at all. Look at these guys. They just don't want to attack the boy. Boy. I really, yeah, I would have wanted to get the overdrive. Uh, we're almost done, so. They just didn't bother with... <laughs> they didn't bother with this kid at all. <laughs> what the hell is that? Yeah, you see how... How little... Gerard got? Which is very strange, because I... You know, he attacked a few times, but... Leon's light ball really kind of shot up there. BP can be recovered using the appropriate restoration items, such as... Puissance... Liquor and natural essence, or puissance. Items that recover BP cannot be equipped to bring into battle encounters, so be sure to plan accordingly. Items that recover BP. The HP of all re, uh, retinue, sorry, members will be automatically healed back to full at the end of each encounter. Used BP will not be automatically restored and can only be replenished through long rests, BP recovery zones, or items. Oh my god, there's a jump button! Wow, I did not expect that. I was just totally going to open up the menu, but that's not... Uh, I'm thinking old school at this point. That's a really nice menu, by the way. Currently held items can be viewed from the inventory screen. Items such as BP restoratives can be selected for use outside of encounters from the screen. Consumable items equipped for to retinue members can be set to automatically replenish from the inventory after their usage in battle. Okay, puissance, liquor. That's 25 BP. This is this is HP as I as I expected. Give it to uh, good old King Leon there. 
Leon Kennedy. This is a really nice menu. I really like that menu. Man, you know, menu design is really being kicked up a notch with Metaphor, Re, re Fantasio, and now this. Your Grace. Perhaps you should rest. It could not have been easy to get here. No. We have not a moment to waste. But your majesty, there are many dangerous foes lurking within these walls. No need for concern. Gerard must learn to fend for himself eventually. I am more than aware of the perils we face. Are you ready, Gerard? We will engage the enemy with the Imperial Cross Formation. I shall take up position in the center, while Bear will protect us from the front. James and Therese shall occupy the flanks. Finally, you shall remain in the back. The safest position for someone as green as you. Focus on offense. Let's move out! Sir! The main menu can be accessed by pressing start, attributes, equipment, and learn text spells of retinue members can be viewed in the main menu. Which we know of. So, are we going to be fighting with literally everybody in the party? This is a lot of people in one one group. Equip gear can be changed from the equipment screen. Each unit can equip up to two weapons. More armor and accessories means higher defense, but will also encumber the unit, causing them to have reduced speed in battle. Units can also equip up to two non-gear items at once. They can have two weapons? What's the point? I mean, I'm guessing you can swap between the weapons, but it's like, whoa. Okay. Oh, okay. This is every. This is what everybody else has. All right. So his secondary can be martial arts, which would be kind of dumb in this situation. Oh, she's the archer. Of course she is. Yeah, already figured that one out. In the overworld, jumping will be useful to hop over ledges and other obstacles standing in your way. Should a gap prove to be challengingly wide, jumping while sprinting will allow for farther leaps. I can't imagine that that was something in the original, you know, being sprite-based. I don't know. I can't imagine jumping was a thing back in those days. As long as there are five units in the retinue, they can form a battle formation, which often has special properties that can affect the flow of battle. In the Imperial Cross formation, the frontmost unit is more likely to be targeted by foes, while the rearmost unit is less likely. Nice. Okay. You know what I really like, though? I, I completely forgot to mention. You can actually swap between the current remake soundtrack and the original classic, which is awesome. I love the fact that they did that. All right, we're just going to do that. All right, well, we know they're weak against Light Ball. Spear Attack. Oh, that's why, because it gives you different... Okay. We don't know what this thing's weak to yet. He doesn't have any... Let's do a Spear Attack. Dude. Awesome. Uh, short Sword Attack. Okay, we're going to go Bow. You know what? Since he is... The defense? Let's have him defend. Easy. He's weak to that? Once the overdrive gauge is full, a powerful combo assault can be unleashed known as a united attack. United attacks can be used at any time on any retinue member's turn. UA combinations can be selected from the appropriate tab in the battle menu. <clears throat> okay. Let's go with um, Light Slash. Yeah. So oh wow. Nice. My oh. Even the king I dodged your crap. My might. Yeah. And of course, there was the option of Japanese voiceover, but I figured, you know, we'll keep it in English for help. now. We fought well today. That dude looks cool. Got himself some plate armor and a great sword. Are you kidding me? Great swords, my jam. You guys know this. Well, that and, you know, I do like bow and arrow as well. So, you know, it's kind of 
up in the air, but I think two-handed weapons, great sword, great hammer or war hammer. Those are my those are my jams right there. Two-handed weapons, two-handed sword slash stuff, whatever you call it. Aha! You can do it. I thought so. Attacking the enemy on the field causes the encounter to begin with a preemptive strike. When a preemptive strike is triggered, all enemies take initial damage and their movement speed for the first turn is lowered. Furthermore, the overdrive gauge will gain a few points. Victory Hell yeah, us. dude. All right, well, we know that they're weak to the other sword type, so I'm just gonna go in. New techniques can occasionally be glimmered or acquired by using other weapon skills. New glimmers will be immediately used once in that turn and can be selected again in subsequent turns. Units are more likely to unlock new techs, uh, new techs when fighting stronger foes. A light bulb icon next to a tech indicates the chance of it glimmering. The brighter the bulb, the higher the chance. Oh. Well, there you go. It's weak against the uh, short sword attack. And yes. now whatever that was, faint. Stun him. A stunned unit can be disoriented and become unable to act for the current turn. Characters afflicted with stun lose their ability to defend themselves, leaving them prone to attacks. Okay. So both of these are capable of coming up with something new. Ooh, that double cut is strong. Oof. We fought well today. I like this. This this is such a classic game for me. I love it. Okay, so I was wondering if you could preemptively hit. Damn right, I'm gonna try. We must seize this opportunity before us. I wonder if that bubble really is any kind of like Leave everything to me. potential. Now. It's weak against that. Nice. Nice. Hard slash. Whoosh. Uh, obviously, we're gonna go light ball here. Go for the center guy. Boom. Defend. Boosh. You got nothing on me. God, he's so weak. Let's go. Kind of annoys me, actually. I'm not gonna lie. It really annoys me how weak he is. Looks like I'm up. I'll just defend. Screw it. He's the tank, so. I'll handle this. I'll Doing it. First. It's over, nice. The leveled up. His light ball leveled. Hmm. Another, another treasure chest. Chris knife. Chris knife. Let's take a look and see. No, I guess it was an accessory? It is. Why the hell look why the hell is it called a Chris knife? Alright, what does this do? Magic defense. Look at look at this. Look at how simple this is. I love this. The fact that everything's just like what does this do? It increases my magic defense. That's it. I love that. I love the fact that that is just like a thing. And it just tells you straight up what it does. A lot of games are, you know, convoluted, and they really just, you know, it's annoying. Everything's so complicated. This is just back to simplicity, baby. I love it. Can we attack this guy from behind? Looks like we might be able to. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hey! I'm guessing he's like a, he's not really a boss, I guess, but you know, still. Let's try light ball, see what happens. All right. Blindness on that guy. Leave everything to me. That's it. Id break or ID break. Confused units have a chance to move unpredictably, acting against orders or even attacking their own allies. Confusion can wear off at a set amount of turns or be cleansed by using restorative items or spells like physic water on the afflicted retinue member. I bet you that's not what they're going to do, though. Hey, oh. 
So far, we know he's weak against the bow. Spear attack? He's weak against that too. Haha. -ha. Not weak against that. Okay, got it. I'm ready. It's my turn. Still confused. Hey oh, you suck, dude. We are going to destroy you. Alright, well now he's confused. Damn it. Let's go double cut on this guy, get rid of him. I better just defend. Screw it. He's confused, so I'm not going to have him hit one of my guys with anything powerful. Um, nope. I'm okay. Just keep him defending. That way he doesn't do anything. Time to act. Okay. Let's get rid of him. Well done, everyone. Excellent. That appears to be the last of them. It shall take two full turns of the clock for the mages to weave their spell and seal the cavern. Once that is complete, those fiends will never bother us again. Now, let us away. The people anticipate your return. strong country and a brave emperor to lead them. As such, they expect great things of victory, and one day you. So it would seem, Father. I shan't betray their trust. I vow to protect the people of Varen with my very life. Pleased you have returned safely. Gerard, I trust you are unhurt? That I am, brother. Though it has taken longer than expected, I am no longer a hindrance in battle. Gerard is much better suited to focusing on his studies than setting foot on the battlefield. Perhaps you should refrain from taking him with you on your campaigns? As the eldest, I feel the battles are best left to me. I understand your position, but fear that the return of the seven heroes gives us little leeway in the matter. The hounds of war howl louder with each passing day, and as long as they do, chaos shall plague our lands. With threats facing us on all sides, we cannot afford to have Gerard shirk his martial training in favor of his letters. Perhaps, but I feel the Empire also requires capable strategists if it is to truly thrive. I can think of none more suited to that task than he. My lord, a woman by the name of Oriev requests an audience with you. Her again. She is persistent. I will give her that. Very well. Show her in. It is an honor to finally meet you, Emperor of Avalon. I must say this is quite a surprise. I had expected a Ceres to be a touch more wizened. Victor, Gerard, 
leave us for now. Today is that woman's lucky day. It is obvious that Father was looking for an excuse that he could use to cut our conversation short. Remember that reading up on combat theory is no substitute for actual experience. I will, brother. Okay, a map of the current location can be viewed by pressing square. We already figured that out. All the coverage tutorials thus far can be viewed again from the main menu. Explore the castle halls. You think she was revealing enough? <laughs> um, I will say this. Let's, um, the music is quite loud, and I usually turn the music down to about, at, you know, eight or a half. I think in this case, we're going to stick to a half. Because it, it just seems a bit over... Well, maybe not. It seems a bit overpowering to the uh, the dialogue. So I want to make sure that it's not like that. This is the save point, obviously. The game is auto-save. Save the game. Okay, so there's the auto-save. It has a separate slot, which is good. Again, uh, you know, saving in demos... I'm not entirely sure what the point is. <laughs> it's a demo. <laughs> it's not going to carry over to the main game, as far as I know. Hey, look, it's the dungeon cell where you start in Oblivion. <laughs> Oops, no button. Uh, he looks bored. Looks like I can't go down here. Of course I'm gonna, you know, explore. I love the look of this. It's really, really nice. I see you have returned, Lord Gerard. Has hunting fiends with his majesty honed your skill with the blade? Not exactly. I fear I am not meant to wield a blade. Try to think of it this way, young master. You need but find which role best suits you out on the battlefield. I'm afraid the knowledge I have gleaned from books does not apply on the battlefield. I personally am neither nimble nor fleet of foot, as anyone can likely tell from a glance. Instead, I focus on becoming a veritable iron wall. By standing my ground and never retreating, I can protect everyone else from danger. Therefore, please do not lose heart. There is a role out there that suits you for certain. You will indeed have to put in the work first, but eventually it will come to you. I look forward to seeing you grow into the man I know you can be. It is kind of you to say so. I will say this, the voice acting is okay. Uh, that's why I usually prefer Japanese, just because it sounds better in general. Um, but the English is not bad. It is somewhat campy in a way, but I guess that's what, what gives it the charm. Ah, Lord Gerard. How have your studies been progressing of late? Not very well, I'm afraid. I have been accompanying my father on his expeditions, which leaves little time for learning. Yes, you have gone on a good many forays of late. Hmm, perhaps it would be more suited to spell over sword? It may take some practice, but I assure you the juice is worth the squeeze. Unfortunately, I still don't know any spells. That simply won't do. Magic can often strike true in situations in which simple physical armaments prove less effective. Allow me to start you on the path with the most elementary of pyrology arts. Fireball. Wow, that was quick and easy. <laughs> I guess I learned quick, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome though. We get we get to throw fireballs now. One of my favorite spells. Lord Gerard, I fear for your safety. 
You may be skilled in letters, but you can hardly be considered ready for the battle to come. I appreciate your concern. However, I must do what I can to carry on my family's legacy. In that case, you should try honing your skills with different weapons, for they are the key to combat. An untrained hand cannot hope to bring the full might of their armaments to bear. A practiced one, however, will undoubtedly make you a force to be reckoned with. Thank you. I shall do my best. Feel free to ask me anything. I shall assist you in whatever manner you require, no matter how trivial it may seem. Okay. You know, it's funny. They asked us to choose a character at the beginning, either male or female, and then name our character. I, of course, chose the male, and I named him Tristan because uh, it seemed appropriate for the for the time period that's being portrayed here. But uh, we're playing as this guy for now. I know it's the story that the, the minstrel is actually telling, but still, I'm wondering when we're going to be able to play my character. Lord Gerard, perhaps you should take up archery. A volley from afar can end a battle before it starts. Archery? I would snap the bowstring simply by knocking the arrow. Oh, nothing a touch of practice can't fix. With my expert instruction, you'll master it in no time. I think you put too much faith in my abilities. Pay him no mind, Lord Gerard. Focusing on a weapon for which you feel more affinity will surely lead to greater results. Use weapons you're comfortable with to get that glimmer of inspiration needed to learn new techniques. Very true. Perhaps I should simply forgo bows altogether. Nonsense! Emperor Leon's noble blood courses through your veins as well! I just realized those two are basically matching. <laughs> Aw, isn't that cute? Whoa. Their frame rate is reduced over there. If I get closer, do they... Yeah, then it gets... Interesting. I'm not even that far away. But you know what? That's a... I mean, you know, some. it might be noticeable by some people, but that's a... It's a smart way to save on processing power. You know, when they're not the focus, they're just background noise, essentially. Uh... It's a good it's a good idea to actually find performance where you might be able to squeeze it out. Man, you guys remember the days when you had to go save a game and on your PS2 or your Xbox original and it would take like I don't know a good 10 seconds to save, maybe even longer sometimes. Lord Gerard, my heart nearly stopped when I learned you had gone with your father to the caverns. Did you suffer any wounds? Nary a scratch. We cannot count on that always happening, though. Do not shirk your swordsmanship lessons, or you may not be so lucky next time. If ever your retinue were to fall in battle, you must have a means of protecting yourself. If it comes to that point, I'm afraid we may have already lost. Where I can never hope to match your prowess. An army is only as strong as its weakest link. And should I be forced to keep constant watch over you, we will surely be bested at some point. Uh, understood. I shall do my best to not hamstring the troops. I believe that everyone has their rightful place. And yours would be in the library, not on the battlefield. Oh, I see. With all due respect, Lord Gerard, you need to hear this. While we mercenaries will fight tooth and nail for whomever we are contracted with, we will not sign a contract with simply anyone. We only work with people whose orders are backed by strength. Should our patron prove to be nothing more than a paper tiger, we will not hesitate to serve someone else. Okay, I shall keep that in mind. Wow. Talk about being brutally honest. <laughs> wow. 
We need more of that these days, let's be honest. I, I, I honestly really like the art style, I'm not going to lie. It genuinely... The shading that they've got going on here does give the game quite a bit of depth. It, je it honestly does. Like, this looks really good. I do wonder, though, if they actually tried to, to use uh, any kind of ray tracing and just figured, eh, it's not going to work. I don't care either way. Let us let me just say this right now. I'm kind of over ray tracing. I would rather my games run well than have to, like, you know, look pretty. Ray tracing doesn't need to be used in every instance, and I will say that there are plenty of games that don't use ray tracing that look better than games that do use it. So, um, it's all about the art, baby. It's all about the art and, and the handcrafting of the environments and the assets that's what matters so you know devs keep keep doing this keep that in mind put your skills to use don't let ray tracing keep you down Ooh. and the frame rate is staying solid 60 i'm not gonna lie like it's it's blowing me away right now i can see some artifacting when moving the camera around the character you can see it just kind of like you know, if you move it really quickly, you guys can probably see that. But other than that, I mean, it's a sharp image. I like the look of it. It's a solid frame rate. I'm not seeing any droppage yet. I imagine alpha effects might do away with that, though. <laughs> Smoke and fire and all that stuff. Okay, so now we got some unvoiced sections here. You look sad, Lord Gerard. Try to cheer up. <laughs> I'm fine, but I find that your encouragement has lifted my spirits even more. Lord Gerard, thank you so much for worrying about my cat. She's doing swell now. <laughs> Quite worried, were you? A lot of save points. Ah, Lord Gerard, please forgive my children for constantly troubling you so. Worry not, for I enjoy their company as much as they seem to enjoy mine. I wonder if I can, like, skip forward and just have it fill in immediately, so that way I don't have to wait for it to fill in. Let's test it out. Yep, I wish you luck, Lord Gerard. Thank you. I shall do my best to live up to my father's name. I'm giving him a more masculine voice because he sounds like a pansy otherwise. I'll take a treasure chest or two. Whoa. Okay. Rich boy over here. A hundred thousand crowns immediately. Would you look at that? I was feeling a little balmy today. Every time I play one of these demos for these JRPGs, man, I just get so nostalgic. Because they, they're they going with what they know. And what they know works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Am I right? The Japanese know what they're doing when it comes to telling stories and actually make their games look good and run well and all this other... Like, they just know what they're doing, man. I love the look of this. I love the, the music. I bet you if it was in Japanese, it would be a lot better. I'd probably have to return to the castle. Um, it probably would sound much better, but I'm just like, you know... For, for the sake of you guys, I'll, I'll leave it in English. I still have a long road ahead of me. All right, let's go speak to father. Do a quick save here. I'm probably going to leave this uh, unedited. I was thinking about editing it, but... Oh, I think... Oh, he just appeared. I thought maybe she did something to him. I mean, you know, if you took one look at her, I think any man would go with that woman. If I may, Father, what exactly did that woman wish to discuss? How someone named Kazinsi in Salmon is not to be trusted. Though Kazinsi may be one of the seven heroes, I do not see him being an immediate threat. Still, it would behoove us to remain vigilant. 
Between that woman's warning and the legend of the seven heroes, I know not which to believe. The truth, however, will reveal itself eventually. All that we can do now is work to ensure peace for the Empire. Then where shall we head next, Father? To the east. There are watchmen causing trouble in the area. If we do not deal with this threat soon, it is only a matter of time before Avalon is attacked. Victor, I leave the castle in your hands. As you wish, Father. Fare thee well, Gerard. The nation would mourn greatly if you were to fall in battle. Your fears are unfounded, brother. I shall see you again soon. Dude, Victor's armor is dope. <laughs> Once a new area has been unlocked, its location will be viewed by pressing the touchpad. The new area can be visited by selecting its icon on the world map. Uh, okay. I think we're gonna... This video's already getting too long. I might actually have to cut it together a little bit. Kind of just, you know... So that's the Watchmen campaign. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there, I think. This is plenty to, you know kind of go on I already am just in love with this game as it is so I don't think I have to really go too much further obviously I haven't really gotten a chance to play with my own character but if this is anything like the metaphor Refantasio uh, demo which I heard actually went three hours like it was a three hour demo which is nuts um, this one's probably similar where you could probably get maybe a couple hours out of it um, since we have yet to even play our own character, so. But this is just supposed to be a first impression to really get an idea of what the game is about. A half hour to 45 minutes is usually a good amount of time. We've gone almost an hour because I don't want to stop playing. I already like the story. I like the characters. Um, albeit the voice acting, the English voice acting is, a l it's all right, but it's not great. I've heard better, um. But the music is great. The combat's fun. It's classic turn-based RPG. I love it. Uh, I like the fact that even though your characters have levels, the weapons also have levels. So if you want to really specialize, all you got to do is use, use one weapon type, which is great. Um, it's not so great if, you know, you need a different type of weapon down the line and you don't have it leveled enough. So <laughs> it, could, it could prove to be detrimental to be specialist in one uh, category of weapons, but... It'll be interesting to find out to see um, just how this game works if uh, if you want to play a certain way. But overall, very awesome. Very excited for this one. It is coming out on October 24th, uh, my brother's birthday. So, you know, be sure to wish him a happy birthday. He's the one who, who I do, with the, uh, do the podcast with, Chris. Um, it's coming out on Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Windows on October 24th. So be ready for this one. I think you're going to like it. If you like JRPGs, check this one out. I know I will be. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And please join me again in the next one, where we take a look at yet another game or demo and hope that it makes a good first impression. But until then, I'm Adam Wolf. This is Romancing Saga 2, Revenge of the Seven. And I'll see you guys later. Later.